Hello, my friends. Simon from What Culture here with the one and only Scott Damore. How are we doing, my friend? I'm doing great. How are you doing after Newcastle? Well, I'm going to tell you this. I'm so tired. You already ran a microphone, and I used my stupid <laughs> microphone to put it in your face. It's a little bit of a rogue operation. I, I was going to wait to the end of the interview, but as you brought it up, which I appreciate, I think Friday was genuinely the highlight of my wrestling venture so far. Oh, wow. So for the people that don't know, although you definitely do, because I went on about it and on about it and on about it, I was on the uh, yeah, the UK pay-per-view on Friday. So as you're right here, I want to shake your hand and say thank yeah, you very man, much. Thank you. Thank I you had for a great, being a part of it. Oh, no, I had an absolutely great time. And also, this is actually a nice segue into it, it was so cool to see, because, you know, you, you used to be a wrestler. We'll get into that later. So you know what the independent scene is like. It's fun. It's awesome. But it's absolute... There's something amazingly cool about taking a step up to that next level, especially when you're about to go through the curtain and you see everybody there and there's the monitors and people are shouting information and there's time cues. Yeah. I mean, the... Added pressure, I suppose, in a good way. I loved yeah. it. I mean, how do, you, how do you kind of take to that these days? Because, again, you don't know me from Adam in the sense you're about to send out me on a fake of you. <laughs> Is there any kind of, like, what if this guy goes out there and absolutely stinks the bed? Well, I mean, I guess on one level it was sort of disappointing because you falling on your face would have been more, <laughs> would have been more entertaining in some ways. <laughs> but truthfully, I looked at it, it's, it's a can't-lose situation for me. Either you do well and I'm a genius for having had you on the show, or you fall flat on your face and we just take the piss out of you. <laughs> so it really was a low risk proposition for me. But no, honestly, uh, like uh, truthfully, we talked about it when you came through the curtain on the way back. I thought it was super entertaining. And, uh, you know, I mean, absolutely had some concerns. I had truthfully never seen you in the ring. I'd seen you do up downs and everything else like Most that. But I, I was pretty confident that you were going to get the shtick down as far as for, you know, on the stick and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, I thought I thought you performed uh, admirably as a, as a wrestler. And it shows that you've put some time in in the ring, which truthfully, I mean, shame on me. I hadn't done my research on and was was unaware how much you had done. To, Not at all. No, know, no, so. no one needs to know what I do in my spare time, no one. <laughs> But that is really cool. And this is a, actually ties into a question I want to ask you as well. For starters, thank you genuinely, because that will give me confidence to keep going and keep pursuing everything. But is that something... I know you've been doing this a while, but of course you have... If we look at wrestling as a, an employee ladder rung, I mean, this doesn't happen, which is kind of my point. But let's say you start off as a wrestler, then maybe you become a road agent or a producer, and then I guess you start running your own wrestling company. <laughs> that's been your story. That's been your journey. So how hard has it been going from, you know, one side of the curtain to the other and knowing maybe I've got to criticise that guy, maybe I've got to compliment that guy, but at the same time, I don't want egos running wild, I don't want to crush their confidence. Is that just something that comes naturally to you? Or did you just find yourself in that situation and you just sort of learned on the fly? Yeah, I mean, look... Uh... A lot of my business education came from the wrestling business. Yeah. And I've taken it and used it in other businesses. I, I think when you get down to its core, a lot of what we do in wrestling qualifies or applies to everything in life. And dealing with people is certainly one of them. And, and I say, above everything else, I'm a coach, right? I'm a coach, I'm a teacher. So um, whether I'm actually in a dojo and teaching a wrestling class or whether... I'm, I'm, you know, in a boardroom and dealing with people or whether I'm backstage, right? I think, I think part of it is we're always all part teacher, part student. So, yeah. cause I think the day you, you stop learning is the day you start dying. Okay. So I, I want to learn, I want to learn something new every day. And, you know, I've been blessed to learn lessons from some of the greats, like the masked assassin, Jody Hamilton or Terry Taylor or Arn Anderson or Chief J Strongbow. But I've also learned lessons from, you know, the people that have set up the ring and people that said like, like there's little thing you can learn something from everybody. If you can't, you're not paying attention. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, in, in my role, um, and I, I didn't ever think I'd be the president of, a, <laughs> of an international wrestling company, but, but I, I'd be lying. I mean, I was pretty early on in my career when I was like, okay, look, I think my, my calling might be more behind the curtain than in front of it. Um, but I mean, I, I still think what I do, I, I think the fact that I was a wrestler and the fact that I earned a living for a decade as a wrestler before I did, you know, anything really of merit behind the scenes, I think helps add a little bit of legitimacy. At least I, I've, be, I've been in that spot. Um, just like for you, like you're a journalist first and foremost, but if you're interviewing somebody like, like people know now you've been out there, you've been in the ring, you've, you've taken the risk of falling flat on your face, <laughs> a lot, which, yes. which I mean, out of the media day today that I'm doing today, I'm meeting with a lot of people. You're probably the only 
only one that's been out there flat backing and and, and, and doing that, right? So, I mean, I, I think that helps in general. One, it helps me understand part of what they're doing. I've gone through that yeah. process, like you said, of standing behind the curtain and getting those butterflies before you go out. I've, I've had that experience of things going well and having that euphoric feeling. I've also had that experience of what it's like when things don't go well. So I think, I think with a little bit of age and experience and that, I, I can look at things and I can, hopefully I do my best and I'm sure I don't do it right every time. But I, I try to look at, hey, when does somebody need a pick me up or a word of encouragement? And when does somebody need, you know, a, a kick in the, in the rear end, right? Exactly, yeah. So I, I try to balance it. No, I mean, like, look, everybody's individuals, um, you know, and is a little bit different. And at the end of the day, um, you know, for us to succeed, we all need to succeed on some level. So, I mean, you know, try to, in, in overall, like, and you saw it, we have a pretty great locker room and a pretty great group of people, both talent and crew, that pick each other up. But I think overall, if we stay positive and we, we support each other much more than we criticize each other, we'll, we'll get ahead together. So, yeah. and I think we've done a pretty good job of that at TNA. Well, I totally agree. Like, I can't believe I actually get to sort of have my own input into this, but I've seen that locker room, I've seen that environment. And even on, you know, sort of the, the lower end of wrestling, sometimes you walk into a locker room, you're like, oh, it's bad vibes. Yeah, there's just... times you're walking, you're like, this sucks. Yeah, yeah, right. And you instantly, eight-year-old schoolboy, you just want to go home. You're like, I don't like it, I can't handle it. But you genuinely, again, I know it's a one and done, but it's out there. It's all over the internet. Everybody, well, Osprey went on about it. Like, the impact yeah. locker room is so good. Do you think a lot of that does come from the fact, because, you know, it all starts at the top. Once again, you've been in the ring, you've gone through the highs and the lows. So, again, every now and then, got to put a foot up somebody's ass. But ultimately, you can relate to that so much more than someone that's never done it, that if a brand new wrestler does come in, they kind of think, well, if something does go wrong, I know I can have a more direct chat, and therefore it is just a little bit lighter, a little bit easier, while still putting in the work and making sure you put on good shows. Yeah, and I mean, look, I'll, I'll take as much credit as people want to give me, yeah, I guess. I'll give you a but, but, <laughs> but I mean, ultimately, like, I think uh, one of the things that, that, I, that a lesson that I learned very young was there's, 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 there's a lot of different approaches to take the things. And some people want to be the smartest person in the room. And that's how they, they feel they're going to be the most successful. I, I, I like to think that when it's done right, I mean, there's times I look around and I go, I'm the dumbest person. So I'm the, you know, because I want to surround myself with the best. Oh, I, yeah. I want to have, I want to have the sharpest people around. I also want to have people. I, I really value that at uh, at TNA Wrestling right now, or I guess at Impact Wrestling until the end of the year. Um, I, I've got people around me that aren't afraid to come up and and say like. I really think what, what what we're doing is wrong. Like, I think we should be doing this instead of yeah, this. Yeah. And I, I don't ever want to, you know, be in that situation where, like, the emperor, you know, has no clothes, right? Like, I want someone that says, hey, buddy, you're naked. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, so, um, you know, at the end of the day, I know there's a lot of times where decisions are going to come down to where, I mean, ultimately I have the final say, but I want everybody to feel comfortable, um, you know, being able to say, I don't think that that's the right move. Mm -hmm. I also want everybody to, I always try to say, uh, I had a football coach, right, who I learned a lot from, and and one of his, um, one of his expressions was make mistakes at a hundred percent, and oh, and great. yeah, and it, it part of his oh better not touch my microphone part of his uh, part of his thing was the worst mistake you make is is the decision you don't make, so I I know that the amount and you've seen it the amount of decisions that have to get made on a daily basis, you know, that if every single decision somebody has to stop and ask me or ask, like, that, then we're just not going to get it done and we're, we're going to ultimately fail. I want people to know that if they're in that spot, they're in that spot to make decisions. Yeah. And if I, I want them to know that if, if, if I disagree, like if you're, if you're working with us and you're there in the trenches and you're doing something and you need to make a decision, I want you to make that decision knowing that if, it, if I disagree with that decision, I'm not going to come to you and scream at you and call you names or whatever. We might have a conversation. I might say, well, why did you do that? Okay, well, I would have done it this way. In the future, I would think, you know, like, like, like you know, yeah. like, do it this way. But I don't want people to be fearful of making decisions. I want a group of people around. Like, we, we've, we've tried to consciously, as much as possible, put the best possible group we can together. Everybody's here because they have something to contribute. And I don't ever want them fearful of making a decision. I want them to, if they make mistakes, make them at 100%. Make them out there trying to make something happen. And if it doesn't happen, then we'll get uh, to work on fixing it. And uh, I know I talk a lot, but uh, Dutch yeah. Mantel, who is such, a, such a, an integral part of what this company has been over the years, uh, years ago uh, used an expression because I used to think 
anything. Like, this is the most important thing in the world. <laughs> and if we don't get this exactly right, the entire world is collapsing. Absolutely. And Dutch would be like, hey, man, can I tell you something? Do you mind listening? To yeah, sure. Like, I've been around a little bit. And, you know, and he threw this line at me. He goes, he goes, there's a lot of things. He goes, I can't promise we ever gonna, we're going to make the right decisions all the time. But I can assure you of one thing, and then that's a, if we get it wrong this week, we got 51 other weeks this year to work hard that's to fix brilliant. it. And it's like that, that type of approach is, is, is kind of is a great approach, right? Because it takes that super amount of pressure off here that, oh my God, if I get this wrong, like everything's going to fall apart. Yeah. If we make a mistake, we're all going to roll up our sleeves and we're going to work hard next week and the week after to make sure that we stay on course. And I think that's the type of approach that we've been, we've been trying to, to use. And I think it's worked here over the last handful of years. Well, I think it's in the, the numbers and the metrics, right? Because, you know, when you watch the companies, it's growing again. It is, be it going to different venues and selling more tickets or, again, you'll know more about all sort of the other more specifics, but it's quite clear from an outsider's point of view looking in that, let's say, you know, we switch to Impact from the name, we start off a little bit, then we get back up. Obviously, just recently you announced the TNA thing. That creates some buzz. Now it feels like we're up here. You're signing big names. You've got guys like Will Ospreay coming in. That maybe wouldn't have happened a few years ago. Who knows, right? Yeah, I mean, it's funny. Like, I sat in the same room six years ago, and it was like uh, it was like we were on a funeral possession, a pr procession. And every interview was talking about, oh, well, this person left and that person left, and is this the end? And it was kind of like, kind of looked at Simon at the, you know, halfway through the day, like, I don't know how much I can keep doing this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, this, like ugh. Yeah. But I mean, being here now, six years later, there's a lot of excitement. And uh, I mean, you mentioned his name a couple of times. Having having a guy like Will Ospreay, who is you know arguably the best wrestler in the entire world right now. I mean, it, I mean, uh, I'm happy to have discussions about it. But it's certainly, I mean, I don't know if it gets much better than Will. And I don't know how you say has a wrestler ever in history had a better single year than Will's had in 2023. Like, it's, it's ridiculous, yeah. right? From, from Wrestle Kingdom to Wembley to, to all the bangers he's had, Match of the Year candidates, his match with Bailey at, at uh, Bound for Glory, what him and Eddie did in Newcastle. I mean, it's just, um, you know, have a guy like him say, like, I want to come in here and be part of this, and have him, like, to publicly state, you know, like, like how much appreciation he had. Like, like, a guy like Will, especially when you're in that spot and, you, you know, you're coming into a new environment, rightfully so, a lot of people would keep to themselves, lock themselves in their hotel room, find a quiet place at the arena. He just jumped right into it and, yeah. and was, was part of the team. Like, you saw it back there. He was watching matches. He was giving feedback. He was joking around with, you know, with people. And I, I think it was super cool. And to have a, have a guy like Will, you know, he came to me after Bound for Glory. And, I mean, he doesn't need to blow smoke up anybody's ass. I don't know if I can say that on this show. You but, can, yeah. Okay, well, then ask. <laughs> um, and I'm going to say it a lot. No, but he, he goes, but he, he goes, look, he goes, I had goosebumps for that announcement. And I mean, I, I'll be honest, I, I knew that I'd heard that, you know, Will, you know, was a bit of a fan, but like for him to say, like, I was a TNA kid. Yeah. You know, I, like TNA wrestling is what inspired me to, you know, to, to be a wrestler. And then for him to be there in the ring in Newcastle and saying, you know, and now that TNA wrestling's coming back, like that locker room, no matter where I end up in the Will Ospreay sweepstakes of 2024, I keep calling it, <laughs> um, you know, that locker room, that crew is going to inspire a whole new generation. So much like little Will was sitting there and got to see AJ Styles and was inspired, I think that there's an entire young generation that, that's going to see the Will Ospreys and the Eddie Edwardses and the Mooses and, and Josh Alexanders and the Deanna Perrazzos and Jordan Grace. I mean, and go, shoot, that can be me. I mean, absolutely, so yeah. true. And just because you've been brought up as well, I also want to thank Will, because he did. He even gave me advice. He don't need to do that, and he went out of his way. Yeah. Now, you mentioned a bunch of names there too, and again, I think this ties into the, we'll call it the regrowth of, the, of, of TNA, whatever. So many people, we'll go with Moose, just because I know that's the one that people kept talking about. Everyone kept speculating, oh, when this contract ends, he's going to go to WWE. Oh, when this contract ends, he's going to AEW. And he stayed with you every step of the way. Now, one, I just think that's cool because he's clearly happy there. And I think sometimes people forget these are human beings. Right. And if somebody's happy, they've won at life. So that's right. a thumbs up. But given everything you've just said, do you take that as another tick box where you go, here we have a main event guy in any, you know, it could be, you could put him in, even go to New Japan, right? They would love that kind of a dude. But he decides, no, this is my home and I want to help this grow. It kind of sort of backs up everything you've just said in the sense that you're heading in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's really been a, a changing uh, of the perception and of the feelings with people, right? I think now there's so many people that are going, like, it's funny, like, I, I think where there was a time where, I remember first, first coming here when Anthem acquired uh, Impact Wrestling and, and it was almost like, like, 
talent did not want to come here. Like it's <laughs> had such a had a sour a sour taste to it. And you had almost like no, like it's different. Now it's to the point where there's like people reaching out from all over saying, man, even people that aren't going to leave where they are. As I run into people in the industry, they're like, man, I, like it's been like it's been so cool. Like I saw this or I saw I saw you guys doing a dance off at the end of a show. Like how does that you know? know? Like it's just they can see that something cool is happening, and I think it does matter. And look, Moose is a guy. He played seven years in the league. He played yeah, seven yeah. years in the NFL. And ultimately, I was there because I was coaching him at the time. He had three teams that were interested in, in, in having in signing him up for another year. And he just wasn't happy. So this is a guy who walked away from a fortune because this is what he wanted to do. Love it. Um, you know, and I, I think he's really he's really found himself with uh, with impact with TNA wrestling. And I think, you know, like certainly he could have gone other places. But I mean, he flat out came. He's like, I don't want to go other places. Like, I'm happy to retire here. Like, That's like all of us. Like, he grew up wanting to be at WrestleMania. But then now as he's gotten there, he's like, well, maybe I can make Bound for Glory. WrestleMania for another generation of people. So I I think that's cool. I think that it's cool that, you know, when Josh Alexander's contract came up uh, a couple years ago and and people were speculating, and I know that there was other stuff out there, he was like, "I, I was... I was a kid in like rural Ontario, Canada, like watching, you know, Christian Cage and, you know, stuff on TNA and being like, oh my God, like maybe one day I would, like, God, it would be so cool if that could be me. Like, I think it's cool that, that, that people want to be here. And I think there's been some instances where people have even been willing to, as we call it in sports, you know, the hometown discount to, yeah, you know, yeah, to play yeah. where you want to be. Like as you said, I mean, there, there's, there's no price for, you know, there, there's a price where you're like, okay, like this kind of sucks, but I mean, <laughs> I, I can, I can suck it up and do it. Yeah. But if you're looking at happiness or misery, then I mean, really, like, like, what's the price of happiness? I, I mean, mean, it really so is. True. And I think people have to crap on the audience now. That's what I do. I think some wrestling fans forget that, but they do. They absolutely do. They're like, oh, what, what did he do that for? Probably because he put a smile on their face. Yeah. And I think that's and that's what wrestling. That's what wrestling should be. Always. Right. You leave. Actually, I'm going to just go 180 here because you do that better than anybody in the sense Eric Young leaves again he's come back now and you killed him off and I just thought literally, <laughs> literally literally killed him off I don't know yeah. used to do that but you know <laughs> Luke Underground was an entity all onto itself you're much more of a traditional wrestling company in terms of how you come in I think it's awesome you do stuff like that yeah. because if someone has to go well how do we get rid of them stab them like do you want to do more stuff like that or do you think it has to be treated as a every once in a while because it, it's tough right like I, I was was brought in so much of a traditionalist yeah, right? yeah. and the like I know that God rest their souls if Chief J Strongboy or Jody <laughs> Hamilton were, were here God. they would they, they would they would shake their head in shame or cuss me out yeah but it's one of those things I say if, if, if you you know like I said if you're not if you're not evolving you're dying I agree and as much as I love to sit there sometimes at night when I'm doing work I'll put on 70s and 80s wrestling and I love it yeah that's not that's not what today's wrestling is we live in a world of video games and TikTok and uh, like it's, it's 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 a, it's a it's a different mindset. It's a it's a it's a whole different uh, you know uh, approach to things. So they're they're not like they're, there is no longer the days where we're sitting there and presenting it as you know Simon Miller is a terrible, mean, horrible person. Like like I came into a bit. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to help you out here. Like I'm saying it's not true. Probably true. It's probably true. Um, no, but I mean like th- like I came into a business where. Babyface has got in one car, Heels got another. You couldn't yeah, stop cool at the thing. same gas station. You couldn't eat at the same restaurant. Um, you know, it was part of me and go, hey, look, that'd be pretty cool if we could still do that. Um, but it, that's not what the world is. Like, our business is not based off of the assumption that the audience, um, you know, believes that what we're doing is, is a true contest. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a different approach. And uh, I look at it and just go, you know, like, hey, let, let's roll with the punches. Like, the first time that we killed off a character it was uh it was ally and it was like you know the decision was made that you know she'd been with the company for a while and and you know was gonna like move in a different direction and like it it sucks like there there, anyone who enjoy anyone who enjoys letting somebody go or telling somebody that their contract's being is 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 really kind of a sick human being i think i agree you know like it, it sucks i've been in the position where it's happened to me i've been in the position where i've had to do it with others but but the fact that in this industry in this day and age you can go hey this is kind of where we are but this is how we're kind of thinking of doing it 
And uh, you know, to have talent go, oh, that, like that's kind of neat. Like, yeah. and I mean, look, she landed on her feet. She's doing she's great. Done a lot. She's yeah. at AEW. Yeah. She's yeah. doing awesome, right? It was probably the right decision for both sides. But we got to we got to do it in such a cool way, right? And then we're like, oh, that kind of works. And I, I don't know if I want to do it every week. Like, we're not a supernatural show yeah. per se. But you know, Jimmy Hart always said that the wrestling's like the uh, like the circus, right? There's something for everybody. If you know, some people like the high wire act. Some people like the elephant. Some people like the clown some people like the guy shot out of the cannon you know let's give it all give them all of it and hope that we you know we find something for everybody yeah. so um you know throwing a little bit in there doing stuff with rosemary and stuff like that in the undead realm and everything else if it if, if we can do it to where some people can you know like look at it and enjoy it for the tongue-in-cheek kind of like thing that it is and, and not turn off the tradition like i i know like god bless them like mike tenay who is one of the greatest people in the world and uh you know truly is the professor I know that when Mike watches the show, when it gets to like the undead realm, he's fast forwarding, yeah. you know, but that's, that's cool okay, right? because yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what, he'll fast forward through that and then he'll watch Josh Alexander and, and you know, yeah. and, and Moose have a banger. He'll watch Will Ospreay and, and Mike Bailey have a match of the year candidate. He doesn't have to watch it. That's the great thing about uh, is now you don't have to sit there. You got a little fast forward. Exactly. Button. Advertisers hate it, but in some um, ways it's great for the consumers. It's true, but honestly, that is my favorite thing about Impact TNA, whatever we're calling it at the moment, is you can... You never know. You get to the next segment, and you're like, oh, they could go crazy. I really like that stuff. I just think it's funny. And also, you find a good balance, like the Feast or Fire thing, which obviously has been going on for ages. But it's such a silly concept on paper. But when you see it in action, it's brilliant. And there's so much drama to it. And obviously, when someone gets kicked out, you're like, oh, no, that's the worst thing ever. So I do think you can find a happy balance. And I think that's one of the stipulations. And also, it feels totally unique. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I watch a lot of wrestling. I can't think of anybody else that does. I'm sure there's been variations of it. But I think when you get that balance, I think it's... I think yeah, I mean, it's all in some situations, it's, again, like, go back to the Ally situation. It, you know, maybe it, in some ways it's not the perfect news to deliver. But I remember Petey Williams calling me and being like, hey, like, uh, like they're firing me in a storyline that, you know, that's yeah, going that's to end up being right, real. Right. Like, but... That one is a part of the story. They were going... They, the thing is, that they were letting him go regardless of what the storyline was. So, yeah. So, leading into... And look, he, he's doing fine. Yeah, he, he, uh, he, well. he, he, end, he ended up back in, you know, with us at Impact. He has a wonderful career for himself behind the scenes at WWE. He has a great family. He's an inspirational father. Like, I mean, he's worked out fine. Would he, would he, would have been so much better for him if they just would have fired him and not put it in a storyline? And I wasn't here in part of the process. Yeah, course, I was the guy that he reached out to and said, like, hey, like, this is what they're doing. This sucks. Not to be the one, like... Yep, it sucks that they're letting you go, but it, it, but if that's the route it's going, at least this is doing it in a meaningful way. Exactly, you vanish from television. Would you, yeah, would you rather just like like disappear next yeah, week, yeah. or would you rather have this moment that people can remember and try and use it? Yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. So just as an asterisk when it's part of the story. Yeah, don't fire people like, like that. <laughs> um, so, last question as well, and I say this to the end because I'm sure you've answered this a thousand times a day today. Hopefully, we can approach it in a in a different manner. TNA, obviously, January 2024 comes back. I think it's awesome because I think you've played it very, very smartly because you've already mentioned it for a while. People are like, oh, man, TNA. And now people are like, oh, man, yeah, TNA. Do you see that as the next building block in getting to wherever you, you want to go? Like, has this been down on a piece of paper for a while? You're like, we do that. And then maybe, again, I'm not asking for what these things are. We incorporate all these other ideas we do have for next year. And hopefully if we sat down in you know, October 2024, you look at it again, attendances are up, you know, merch is up, ratings are up, whatever the metrics we're going with. Has that always been part of the plan or was it just more one day someone woke up and went, it's time to bring back, you know, three letters? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, in my heart of hearts, it's always been TNA wrestling. Like, I well, left I that, like, TNA, all the time. and, and yeah. that's one of the things, yeah. right? And we've, we have we had broadcasters in countries around the world that were like, oh, you, you can be in drag wrestling, but it's still TNA. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was still in the guide as TNA, even though the show said impact. Uh, but I mean, look, I, in my heart, it's TNA wrestling. I think in a lot of fans' hearts. And, you know, in 2018, like, I think if we would have, like, said, hey, we're TNA now, people would have went, oh. Because it had gone TNA, Impact, TNA, yeah, Global course, Force, yeah, yeah. you know, back to Impact. Like, we just, you know, it wasn't the right time. I think now we're at a point where we're, we're, we're in a great spot for it. I think this group deserves to be called TNA Wrestling. TNA Wrestling, I take a lot of pride in. Yeah. And I'm very proud to have the group of individuals we have uh, on the roster and behind the scenes uh, carry that name. I think it, I, I think it's, and I had an exchange with Jeff Jarrett about this the other day. I actually was flying over here and I was messaging him back and forth and, you know, I said, we haven't really talked about it, but I just want you to know, like, like this has our 100. 
Like this is getting everything we got because this is something you created awesome. and it's something that means the world to me. And we had a wonderful exchange about it. He was yeah. very supportive. Um, you know, so I mean, t- to me, the timing's right because we are ready to, to get out there and do bigger things. And I think this group is ready for that. And I think that, you know, w- when you see the effect that it has on people in our locker room and like the Trey Miguel's and the Josh Alexander's and you see a guy like Will Ospreay who's, excited about it and you're just like okay like this is kind of neat and i think fans have, have, have just wanted to wanted to cheer it and out of respect they haven't right yeah. it's kind of been like okay like they're impact wrestling we're gonna go impact wrestling <laughs> but i mean i think they truly wanted to to chant tna and they did it when bobby Roode and aj styles were in the uh, were in the royal rumble they did it when yeah, jeff Jarrett and sting yeah. running yeah. an aw pay-per-view they did it at wembley and for eighty thousand people you know, they, they've wanted to to chant it. And I think part of it was, is we've now, like we, we've we went to an audience that's wanted to do it, but out of respect hasn't and said, you know what? Run wild with this. Yeah. And if you look at the four days that we've done here, like that chant from oh, beginning to end rang out. Friday was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy, it was awesome. Yeah, and I mean, to, to me, I'm like, okay. Like, it's like, I was I was pretty confident that when we do this, and this, this, you know, has been, you know, in the in the background and like rolling around for ages. But it was in February when we started working every day on, on making this happen. Wow. That's and that's awesome. for the fact that for eight months this happened and never got out as a testament to everybody involved here. That's incredible. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Right? Everything leaks. And, and <laughs> yeah, and, and, and to me, like, I was pretty confident that that initial reaction would be like, yeah. You know, but then I was like, I thought, okay, like, I think, like, the, the Twitter verse, the X verse might be a little negative, and they weren't. It was, no, it was really super positive. positive. Yeah, really positive yeah. and, and then seeing the crowds here and talking to people both in Chicago and then here as we go around the UK, uh, I think people are really excited about it. It's like we've, we've given them back a piece of their, of their childhood, and I just think it's cool that people that are now a little bit older, you know, get to, to say, hell yeah, like it's back. And I get to take like, like their kids and the next generation gets to look at it and be part of it. So I'm pretty excited for 2024. I think that's wonderful. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a beat because that's the greatest setting to an interview ever. But as a secret question, more UK stuff in 2024, right? Oh, 1,000%. Oh, yeah. 1,000%. It took us far too long to come back here. You know, we did one show in Manchester, and then we were planning a full-scale tour for 2020. Well, and then we know what happened there. <laughs> and then, you know, now to come back here, and, uh, and the response has been fantastic. And uh, I can't wait to get back here. I think it was, and you got to see it. Like, I, I think for, for our roster, uh, it was a great experience to, to, to be here and do it together. And it reminds me, like I said, I've said it a bunch 2018 coming over here was a landmark moment for us because we were treated like rock stars when we came over here and it was so cool. Um, I just never forget that first show in Liverpool and like being like, all these people are here for us. (laughs) And then then they were like, and then they were like outside the venue and they were outside the hotel and I was like, this is pretty neat. Like, you know, so I mean, and and the UK fans, I say it 12 months a year, it's not because I'm here. You watch it, I say it to media in the US. Such an important part of TNA wrestling's history. And they're the most passionate fans, you know, among the most passionate fans in the world. And we saw it these four days, you know, they, they filled the venues, they chanted, they cheered, they had fun. They, they love the serious wrestling. They took, you know, they can, they can laugh along with Grado. They can, they can sit there and watch, you know, Will and, and Eddie have a banger. And uh, I just think it's, uh, it's a great place to be. And I think that uh, being in this market is, is key to us. I think the fact that we're back on Sky, on zone. Uh, is great. I think the fact that you know, like digitally, our footprint is so is so big, and that started here in the UK. What is now our app started as a, as a you know, as an app to make up for the fact that we we at the time didn't have yeah, yeah, yeah. didn't have a, a, a TV deal in the UK. So like everything that Impact Plus has has become and what it's going to be is because of this market. So I mean, when you write the story of TNA wrestling, you can't write it without the UK. That's awesome. I love to hear that. Scott, thank you so much for your thank time. You, and again, as I do have you here, I really, Friday's going to stay with me for a long time. I had a big old drive after that and I wasn't tired at all because you gave me an adrenaline hit. It's probably going to last me for a good few weeks. So I really, really well, appreciate We got to figure out how we follow it up next year. I mean, I'm not going to, I'll never say no. <laughs> you, you, you ring that phone, I'll answer. I appreciate it very much. Like the video, share the video, subscribe. We'll see you soon.